In rounds two or three of this year's NFL draft, the Denver Broncos will be on the clock, and could they take a look at cornerback? What potential options are there for the Broncos, potentially, at round two and round number three? Sarah Bettinger and myself, we look at a wide variety of cornerback prospects in this latest episode, Locked on Broncos. You are Locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Good morning. Welcome back into a brand new episode of Lockdown Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast here on the Lockdown NFL Network, your team every day from the South Stands to the end zone. I'm your host, as always, Cody Rourke, joined alongside by my co-host, Sarah Bettinger. Both of us, we covered the Denver Broncos for the Lockdown Network and Nine News. Broncos country, thank you so much for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day. Every single day means the world to both Sarah Bettinger and myself. Whether you listen free and available everywhere, you get your podcast and audio format, or whether you watch us here on YouTube in 4K High Definition. Make sure you hit that subscribe and that follow button. Turn on notifications so you never miss out on a day's worth of Denver Broncos news, content, and coverage. Sarah, my friend, hey, as the Broncos offseason conditioning program rolls on, we got to hear from Cortland Sutton and Justin Simmons yesterday at the UCL Training Center. And the word around Dove Valley right now is there is a lot of juice going on, especially with the energy of Nathaniel Hackett in team meetings, the addition of Russell Wilson. Broncos players are excited. A lot of culture building going on right now. But you know what? The NFL draft is just weeks away. And cornerback right now still a little bit of an area of concern for the Broncos when it comes to death. Can't wait to break down all these potential options in round two and round three with you. This is my favorite time of year, Cody. You know as much as anybody does. I love the NFL draft. And, man, I'm starting to get a little sad, right? I mean, like, we're working backwards from the draft now, and it's it's barely two weeks away so thankfully the Broncos have to wait until Friday I guess that makes everything last a little bit longer for us at least as far as we know right we don't know whether they'll trade back into the first round or not but man the cornerback position is very interesting we've been talking a couple of times on this show in particular will the Broncos bring back Bryce Callahan for the 2022 season because right now it just kind of feels like the cornerback position is incomplete but maybe we're going to find out here in a couple weeks, Cody, that, that the Broncos really like this cornerback class in the NFL draft, and we got some players that they could choose from. I like the tie-in that you made there with the incomplete part of the Broncos cornerback room. We love it. Obviously, can't wait to hear that at Empower Field a mile high this upcoming season for the Denver Broncos every time there is an incomplete pass here. But let's take a look now at round two. Which cornerbacks could the Denver Broncos target at pick number 64 if cornerback is the position that they are looking at and usually sometimes you have to look at a lot of these draft analyst big boards we're talking about Daniel Jeremiah we're talking about the Dane Bruglers of the world probably the two most trustworthy sources as you and I have talked about here on the show when it comes to draft prospects and maybe where they're going because they seem to have a little bit of a pulse on the vibe on how various NFL executives feel let's talk about one option here Roger McCreary cornerback out of Auburn and on Dane Brugler's big board he is 55th there on there. What about Roger McCurry? Maybe makes sense. Like, what does he bring to the table here from a skill set position and talent position? Well, he was one of the most productive corners in the SEC this past season, and I think that worked out pretty well for the Broncos in 2021, right? So maybe you just dip right back into that SEC talent pool again in 2022. I think Roger McCreary, he's a guy that, you know, he kind of crept into the first round of a lot of mock drafts over the course of the last few months, and he's kind of slipped back into maybe that middle to late second round range, potentially within Broncos striking distance. What I really like about him, Cody, 37 passes broken up and six interceptions over the last three seasons. Even though he's not a total ras hole, like we've been talking about, those ras scores <laughs> matter for the Denver Broncos. He's not all the way up there, but he has a solid enough score, I think, to be the Broncos' top pick. It would be fascinating to see. If he fell to 64, I think he'd be a great value. And I think in a situation like that where maybe they don't have that elite athleticism in a sense like other guys with the speed and the short yard burst. And, and obviously we talk about the split times that a lot of these prospects have. I care more about game speed, right? What does the game speed look like for him? Justin Simmons wasn't the fastest, most explosive guy coming out of the NFL draft as well when he was out of Boston College, but he's one of the best playmakers on the field that position because he's smart and he understands where to be. He understands where to be in position. And for a Roger McCreary, if this is what embodies him, maybe inside the nickel or even on the outside, he could find a way to have an impact role here for any NFL team coming up here. But this next prospect intrigues me a little bit. Uh, 
ironically enough, I think I just used a little bit of a pun there. Cam Taylor Britt out of Nebraska, <laughs> sir. He is ranked in uh, in the big board, 57th on Brugler's big board here. Now for him, we talk about the Nebraska connection. We've seen some really good cornerbacks come out of Nebraska historically. Now why might he be an option here for the Denver Broncos at their first pick essentially of the NFL draft at number 64 in round two? Well, I think he's one of the most aggressive corners in this class, and he's really picked up a lot of steam. The mock draft machines have had him in the later portion of round three at best, and in the middle of day day you know day three you know late on day three at worst. So, I mean, he's really ascended in terms of this whole pre draft process as these these insiders or these NFL draft analysts compile information, talk to NFL teams, and really deep dive these guys' games. He's gone way, way up. So I think Cam Taylor Britt, you've got some versatility there. He played some safety at Nebraska, and he's obviously got some inside-outside cornerback versatility. But, man, his number one strength is aggressiveness, and that will get him into a little bit of trouble you know, because he is so aggressive, a lot of times he he will use a little bit of poor technique or maybe just kind of, you know, get a little reckless um, while being aggressive. But man, I think at pick 64, he would be a great selection for the Denver Broncos with his size, his speed. He's a 4.38, 40 time in the speed department. So we know he's got that high RAS score and George Payton loves that. So I think he's a really realistic option to be sitting on the board at 64 and somebody that could play for you right away. Now let's take a look at the Pac-12 now. Like, take a look at Kyler Gordon, cornerback out of Washington. Now on Brugler's big board, he comes in at 51st year, an explosive, quick twitch athlete. You know, right here it also categorizes he did not have the best 40 time or meet the expectations with a 4-5-2, but he's freakish in other categories. Can you kind of explain that a little bit? Like while the speed may not be there for him, obviously size I think is one of those things you look at with corners. What other elite athletic traits does he bring to the table? Well, tremendous explosiveness and tremendous quickness. Like you mentioned Justin Simmons earlier. Yeah, he ran a four six something in the forty yard dash, but his vertical jump was out of out of the gym, you know, and he had a great three cone time, which shows off short area quickness and burst. So you look at those two other things when you're talking about a cornerback that runs a four five two, which isn't bad. I mean, it's still very fast. But man, uh, he he had a, a huge vertical jump as well, and he was on Bruce Feldman's uh, freaks list going into this season. And one of the things that I think coaches will love about this guy, Cody, is that he was a special teams ace for Washington after being demoted from a starting position. So another guy in this draft, Trent McDuffie, a, a surefire first round pick, took his starting job a couple of years ago. So what did Kyler Gordon do? He went and got great at special teams and he became their primary guy on special teams. And so you can bet that coaches and front office guys are going to absolutely love that aspect of his game that when he got demoted, he took to being uh, the best special teamer on the roster. And then he worked his way back into the starting lineup by playing an inside outside versatile role. I really like this guy and I think he's going to be a good pro. Hopefully he doesn't go to any of the other AFC West teams <laughs> before the Broncos have a shot at him. Well, it seems like he demonstrates a lot of those leadership and character traits, too, because in a situation like that, how you respond after getting demoted, I mean, it's usually bad. Like you see a lot of people enter the transfer portal when they don't get a start anymore in the NCAA. But obviously for him, he stuck around and he found an initial for himself. And what better way to make it on an NFL field than playing special teams? So he's good suited there. But what happens when the Denver Broncos are next on the clock here at pick number 75? Let's say they don't go cornerback at number 64. Who could they look at at pick number 75? Sarah Benjamin, myself, we're going to die on that coming up here in just a moment. But before we do that, let me tell you about Shady Rays, the sponsor of today's episode, Lockdown Broncos. And Shady Rays is an independent sunglasses company that gives you the features of $200 sunglasses for a fraction of the price. That means polarized lenses, well-constructed durable frames, and premium high-end finishes. Also something that you won't find anywhere else is Shady Rays Insane Protection Program. Shady Rays includes lost and broken protection on every pair of glasses. They will send you a brand new pair. If you lose them, no matter what happened, give them a try. And if if you don't love them, you'll pay nothing. It's as simple as that. 10 meals are also donated to fight hunger in America. When you shop with Shady Rays here today, exclusively for our listeners of Lockdown Broncos, you can head to ShadyRays.com and use code LOCKDOWN. That's one word, LOCKDOWN, to get 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. That's code LOCKDOWN for their best deal of the season. 50% off of two or more pairs of Shady Rays sunglasses backed by over 150,000 verified five-star reviews. 
And as we jump into the second half action on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos, we're going to take a look at what cornerback options could be potentially on the table for the Denver Broncos at pick number 75 here. But before we do that, just real quick, Broncos country, thank you so much for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day. Every single day, both Sarah Bender and myself, we appreciate you. We appreciate all the interaction we get in the YouTube comment section down below. Thank you so much for reaching out to us. We love talking with all things Denver Broncos with all you amazing listeners all across the world because Broncos country has no limits. They're everywhere, Sarah. So let's continue our conversation here today. Cornerback prospects in the 2022 NFL Draft. The draft is just a couple of weeks away, and the Denver Broncos will more than likely be taking a look at some cornerbacks in this year's NFL Draft. Where will they look at it, or where will they take one? We don't know yet, but you know when the Broncos are on the clock here in round number three, at pick number 75, we have to take a look at a couple of prospects. First off, let's take a look at Marcus Jones, a player we've talked about here on the show before out of Houston. He is ranked 70th on Brugler's big board here. He's also a guy that can add value to the Broncos in terms of special teams in the return department and also has some traits that maybe could play, even though he's a little undersized. Talk to me a little bit about maybe how you envision Marcus Jones here with the Broncos potentially at number 75. Well, I think first and foremost, the return touchdowns jump off the stat sheet here almost broke the NCAA record he had nine return touchdowns between his time at Troy and Houston and he also added a receiving touchdown I mean he, he was just so productive and such a playmaker it's kind of crazy to see that kind of I mean I just I, I don't know what do you expect it I mean could he be the next Devin Hester I mean Devin Hester was a wide receiver turned DB in college as well and maybe I mean a lot of return game is about instincts right Cody so you see a guy like this that has nine return touchdowns and I should also say at pick number 75 any of those guys that we previously mentioned in the first segment if they're still sitting there no brainer picks but man this guy 10 interceptions 42 passes broken up you can't help but wonder though do his size limitations keep him as a slot type of player going to the NFL level. I think that's a possibility, but I still think he would be a great value pick at 75. And the Broncos need some more slot help, even with the additions of Kwan Williams and obviously the return of a saying Bassey inside the nickel for the Broncos. Hey, even K Jack might be playing a little bit of that role as well this upcoming season. So you have to factor in like we have no idea what Ajero Evero is going to do, but I'm excited to see it. But this next prospect is very intriguing to me because we talk about RAS, we talk about elite athleticism. Tariq Woolen out of UTSA is there. He's 81st on Brugler's big board at six foot four, 210 pounds. This is ridiculous that he was able to run a 4.26 in the 40-yard dash, and he's got a 42-inch vert. When we talk about athletic freak, Tariq Woolen, he embodies every characteristic you're looking for in a guy that has that. But with that, there's a reason he's projected a little bit lower here. What are the reasons behind that, Sarah? Well, I think one of the top reasons is he's a converted wide receiver, so time on task is a big issue there you want to see more of him at the cornerback position and you just don't have the opportunity to do that and I think that with that seasoning comes the reason like you said why he's falling into the middle of day two but the athletic traits are simply too good to let him fall to day three of the NFL draft and really you know I, I think with his size Cody you don't see a ton of six foot four corners in the NFL, which is odd to me. There's so many six foot four wide receivers, but not as many six foot four corners. But this guy has a chance to do it. I mean, he could play outside corner on a full time basis, or he could be your dime linebacker, or maybe a coaching staff, maybe a Giro Evero looks at him and says, Hey, I think that guy's more of a full time safety at the NFL level. That's kind of the good and the bad about somebody with versatility or somebody who's kind of a, a, a ball of clay that your coaching staff can just mold. <laughs> That's really where I think he's at at this point. Just a freak athlete who's a ball of clay. Well, you know, we talk about really good defensive back schools, right? I think about the LSUs. I think about Alabama. But, you know, this year in the NFL draft, you can even make a case for Cincinnati here. And Kobe Bryant is one of those guys. He's 87th on Brugler's big board at six foot one, 193 pounds. Said that he improved his RAS score at his pro day. He's still not off the charts. He ran a 4.47 in the 40-yard dash, a 33-inch vertical, which is about the same as Jonathan Cooper. So when we talk about in the AFC West, where you have all these wide receivers, and you have some size now in the NFL, can he make plays on the football in the air if he is chosen by the Denver Broncos and plays a role on the defensive side of the ball? That is an interesting question, but you know, what are some pros as to maybe why the Broncos could select him if he is available? Well, when you talk about Kobe Bryant out of Cincinnati, I think you're looking at a guy that has ultimate premier confidence in his game. I mean, teams just did not throw 
at Sauce Gardner this past yeah. season, and they did, and they really didn't the last few seasons, and for good reason. Sauce Gardner, he's probably going to end up being a top ten draft pick himself. But on the other side of the field, Kobe Bryant was just simply, uh, I mean, just a lockdown player. He actually ended up winning the Jim Thorpe Award, which is given to the nation's best defensive back. And this is really, really cool to me, Cody. 50 starts at the college level and on a great defense. The Cincinnati defense has been very good the last four years. Kobe Bryant, obviously a big part of that. And he's been productive. I mean, from day one, I mean, he, he's had 45 passes broken up, 10 interceptions, and obviously getting all that attention with Sauce Gardner on the other side. I mean, he's done a great job, and I can't help but think that's built up his confidence. I think he'd be a really great pick for the Broncos in the third round, even without the elite RAS score, right? I mean, that's that's not necessarily a make or break thing. Remember, we only have one draft to go off of in terms of what George Payton really loves at the you know in terms of what he values in prospects, and we think RAS is high on the list, but perhaps somebody like Kobe Bryant who maybe doesn't have the best RAS score could kind of change the he, he could kind of even out the the average so to speak uh, because of his production. Well, the Broncos' second third-round pick comes in at pick number 96. And could the Broncos be interested in a potential Senior Bowl gem that made some headlines at the Senior Bowl this past year? We're going to get to that coming up here in just a moment. But before we do that, Broncos country, let me tell you about Built Bar, the best-tasting protein bar that is out there on the market today. The bars are covered in 100% milk chocolate. And when you take a bite into a Built Bar, it is soft. And it is easy to chew. And you can go to Built.com today to see the nine amazing original flavors like salted caramel, peanut butter brownie, double chocolate, raspberry. The list goes on and on. Plus the occasional limited time flavor like the Built Puffs, which is marshmallow covered in 100% milk chocolate with a flavor like banana cream pie or the churro puffs and even brownie batter puffs, which could be making a comeback at any point at Built.com. Make sure you check it out here today. And if you need a little bit of extra fuel to get yourself through your day, to get you through a workout, to get you through your day, at the office, or if you just need a little bit of a pick me up, but you also like the indulgence of chocolate and a dessert, well, guess what? Built Bar is perfect for you because each bar contains 17 grams of protein, 130 calories, and only four grams of sugar. So go to built.com right here, right now, lockdown Broncos, and you know, tell them that we sent you here. And what you can do is you can get 15% off your next order at built.com by just using promo code LOCK15 at checkout, and that's going to get you 15% off at built.com. As we jump into the fourth quarter action on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos, we'll talk about some of the cornerback options for the Broncos potentially at pick number 96 the 2022. NFL draft that Broncos country maybe should acclimate themselves with a little bit here. But before we do that, thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. The show would mean the world of both Sarah Bettinger and myself. If you listen to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, if you could write us a review, if you love the show, leave us a five-star review. And in the review itself, make sure you leave your Twitter handle so you have a chance to receive a double entry into any future contest giveaway that we do here on Lockdown Broncos. And one of the things, too, you can't see it if you're listening to this on the podcast, we have a Russell Wilson Color Rush jersey that we will eventually be giving away once we hit 8K total subscribers here on the YouTube channel. We're just about 1,300 away. We appreciate you so much, Broncos country. You have a chance to enter in right here today on Lockdown Broncos. With that said, Sarah, my friend, let's take a look at a couple other prospects here as we round out today's episode, Lockdown Broncos. Take a look at Fayetteville State cornerback Joshua Williams. I've seen his name pop up recently in various mock drafts coming up as a late round three guy and maybe even like at worst, like a round five selection here. He's 93rd on Brugler's big board here. A small school prospect, obviously, out of Fayetteville State, but you know, listed here, he's got intriguing six foot three size and he's also 197 pounds. He's got the frame to be able to transition. He could play outside corner, he could play safe. Safety, if need be, he's a little bit taller too than Kareem Jackson, and he, he kind of fits them more. I think of where Michael Ojemudia is as well. Tell me a little bit more about Joshua Williams. Well, I think he's another one of those guys that kind of like Tariq Woolen that we talked about in the last segment. He's kind of on the lines of those developmental type of prospects. You remember the Broncos back in 2017, they took Brendan Langley, uh, and, and that was kind of you know that pick didn't work out. But it would be a similar logic type of selection. Not that he's not that every small school guy is a converted receiver, but I think you've got a lot to work with there. And this is a guy that also he's got a punt return touchdown on his resume. So he's got some return abilities as well. And I think that's something that the Broncos have to keep at the back of their minds is Deontay Spencer. He's out. So who's going to be your next return specialist? That's something they're going to have to look for in this year's draft. And maybe the conventional wisdom says that guy's going to end up being a wide receiver that does that for you. 
maybe it ends up being a corner like Marcus Jones or maybe somebody like Joshua Williams who could come in there and do it for you. Well, maybe even a Damari Mathis, the next cornerback listed out of Pittsburgh at five foot 11, 196 pounds. Right here, an elite level rascal with a 4.38 in the 40 yard dash, a 43 and a half inch vertical. Like that right there is ridiculous. For someone who's 5'11, okay, Sarah, here's some perspective. I'm 5'10. I'm not the tallest dude in a room, right? But 5'11 and a 43 and a half inch vertical. That means that dude can jump out the gym, especially if you're like playing basketball. Like he could easily dunk it. Like not even a problem for him. This is ridiculous athleticism. What could he offer to the Denver Broncos? And then will you round us out with a potential senior bull stud who kind of rose up through the ranks here just a few months ago? Absolutely. Yeah. Damari Mathis is a guy who's kind of been popping up on the radar. 24 passes broken up, five interceptions over 25 starts. Only issue with him is there's not not a lot of experience in the slot. So you'd kind of have to teach him that role at the NFL level. But man, if he's five foot 11, what does that make him? Five feet is 60 inches plus 11 is 71. So he's jumping 43 and a half. That's I mean, that's more, over half of his height, so that's crazy. But, I mean, you just don't see that number pop up very often. I think that the record at the Combine is like 45 or 46 or something like that, so he's very close to the best ever in that regard. So I would love to see that. And he has some safety versatility as well, so maybe not experience in the slot, but some safety versatility. You like that a lot. And then Zion McCollum, who's number – he's not he's not in the top 100 – of Dane Brugler's big board, likely because of the fact that he played at the FCS level. A little too much risk there going from the competition standpoint, but he played corner and safety, as well as a lot of special teams at Sam Houston State. And here's the big numbers, Cody. 54 passes broken up, 33 interceptions, and a wow. perfect 10 out of 10 on the RAS chart. So ball production is there. The RAS is there. The size is there. I mean, this guy is kind of a freak, so maybe this guy would be the best value in terms of what the Broncos prioritize athleticism-wise, kind of like Quinn Miners last year coming from the D3 level. One thing I do know, too, George Payton loves to look at a lot of these smaller schools as well. Like, he does his homework. I mean, the Broncos did so much homework, and it wasn't just because of the Senior Bowl on Quinn Miners, but seeing Quinn Miners at the Senior Bowl doing what he did last year Definitely caught the attention of the Broncos scouting department, and they did decide to do a little bit of a deeper dive. You know, small schools, I think it's always the question. Like, if you play at a small school, how are you going to play potentially against potential D1 guys, Power 5 guys, even like first-round picks? So I think for Zion McCollum, being able to go to the Senior Bowl, being able to work against a lot of potential round one picks, round two picks, guys that will be starters in the NFL, I think gives a good evaluation for the Broncos scouting department. They have eyes everywhere, as does every other NFL team. But could Zion McCollum? be a potential project a secret weapon the broncos could be looking at in this year's nfl draft specifically at the cornerback position or a hybrid safety rule let's know your thoughts down below on the cornerback prospects that we talked about that you liked or if we missed a prospect let us know who we should be talking about in the youtube comment section down below or you can tweet us on twitter at cody work nfl at sarah bettinger at lockdown broncos but just a reminder lockdown broncos is here for you every single day monday through friday all year long because for the true broncos fan there is never an off season and both sarah bettinger editor and myself we love to bring you daily objective denver broncos news content and coverage and giving you a chance to share your voice here on this platform lockdown broncos make sure you hit that subscribe button make sure you're following along on your favorite audio podcasting platform but with that said that will wrap up today's episode lockdown broncos broncos country in the coming days and weeks ahead here you're going to get into the expectation series where we take a look at a player and we talk about their expectations potentially going into the next season you get that and much more here on the lockdown broncos podcast